Hello guys and welcome to this new video in the game engine series. Hope you guys are doing good. Now in the previous video I explained how I added a new setting to the game engine and that setting was the ability to actually save the change, the changes that we're making on the game engine. So if I move this tree for example and say okay I don't want this tree to be here anymore I want it to be here just I just move it and put it there and if I hit the S key on my keyboard you will see we have a message here telling me okay this the object have, have been passed so I hit the key and you see object passed to you see object passed to pass to and I have all these objects which are passed this is just for debugging purposes I want to always you know make sure I have everything I have an eye on everything going on when I pass texture and things. So I could do that, take this mountain and put it right here and I could save, you see, I could close it and open again. So that was the idea of the previous video. So if this is your first time watching this, simply recommend you to go and check that out. I have a whole playlist where I explain how to create this game engine right here. So if you're interested in that, I think uh, you are, you know, in the right place. So just go out and check that now in this video we're gonna be moving forward so if you have been following along you will uh, you remember that I had this problem that I I couldn't move an object you know uh, without having to move the object which are you know like on top of each other so if I had like this object right here and if I moved this over this guy here then this would also start moving with this and I had that problem before and it was difficult for me to actually you know move things around and you know do everything I want to do so and in this video I'm gonna explain how I fix that that's the topic of this video but before we get started I want to really thank all my patreon for supporting my work it really means a lot to me if you are you know if you find this interesting and you want to support what I'm doing you can still go out and support my work on patreon it's really encouraging and I also want to say if you haven't subscribed right now just go out and hit that subscribe button it doesn't cost you that much so if I go to the source code now I want to start from my game scene so if you remember from the previous video we already have this variable right here there is nothing new this only this here is new so we are we only have two new uh, parameters or member variables whatever you might want to call them we have this is moving object I think the name is self uh, explanatory don't know how to actually see what it's doing but yeah this is just to check if we are actually moving an object right now and we have the selected object which you know is a pointer to the object which will be selected and which we want to move or modify the position and things like that we're probably gonna be also changing the scale and you know but I'm gonna be working on that so uh, uh, we only have the setter and the getter here so that's all normal stuff for the selected object now I want to switch over to my game object to show you how I implemented that you know in the game object so that we can actually move and change the position of an object now we have right here in the update function of our game object we have this you know we simply say engine gets in and we check are we moving an object right now if we are not moving an object and but if we have right now the mouse down okay and the mouse is inside of the shape of this object because this object has like um, an SDL rectangle which represent the shape of the object so each object has like the, the container so if we have the mouse inside of that shape and the mouse is down we're not moving yet which means we don't have a, 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 a selected object yet because if we have a selected object then we probably are moving when the mouse is down so but in this case we're not moving so we want to set this object as the selected object that's what we actually do here now we have this move uh, method or function down here which will be used to actually move the object when it's selected so we can simply go and check is the mouse inside of the shape of this object if yes then you're simply gonna go and grab this this even uh, motion vector which represent the distance that the mouse um, the, the distance that the mouse moved 
uh, when we're doing the mouse motion. So let me go over and show you that in the event manager. So here in my event manager, I have two vectors, one for the current position of the mouse and one for the last position. So the last time the mouse has moved, we store that last position and we store the current posi position where the mouse is at. Now the vector, the motion vector of the mouse is the difference between these two variables, between the current and the last position. That's exactly what I'm calculating here. Yeah, those two vectors. And uh, the rest is just normal stuff. We have our mouse motion, even mouse up and mouse down. And we simply handle that. We have the mouse down right here. So whenever the mouse is down, we have this array, this, uh, this array right here. What is it? This is a vector of Boolean, which takes, takes three values, one for the bottom left, middle button and the right button so this is for the mouse so that's why we simply check is the button left middle or the right one down then you want to set that value to true and the same thing up here and if you want to know if the mouse key is down we simply can call uh, the mouse down here you can see mouse button down and give like the name of that button so you can see the button time is the enum here left middle and right and we simply want to give the name of that button and we simply retrieve the data from the mouse button state array or vector that's the idea and here we want to set the the previous position or the last position of the mouse before we start dealing with events so we set the, the last position now if there is something that happened then we want to manage that in here but if nothing happened then both are going to be equal which means this will return a vector with zero zero that's the idea so that's how i kind of manage this uh, part of the motion vector that's how i call it so and you can see right here i simply grab that motion vector and translate the position of this object right here so that's why prop properties and then position and then i simply translate it's also a vector position is also a vector and I also want to update the shape, the position of the shape, because you don't want to move the object and leave the shape aside. So if I click here, you see the shape is moving with the object. I can actually make this, if that's not visible, I can simply add like, uh, let me kind of add this fill right here. So you can really see which object is selected. Let me compile this. So if I select this object, you see it's going to be cover because I set the color. This is a field rectangle. And if I click on this, you see we're moving the shape with the object and yeah, just like that. So let me kind of remove this because I don't want to have something like that. So compile and uh, yeah, that's it about the game object. That's all, was, that's all that we needed to actually have in the game object to be able to actually manage that. Now let me switch over to the engine. This is where we actually uh, manage the event to move that object and you know grab all that selected object and things like that. The first thing we want to do in the draw function in the render, we check do we actually have a selected object? If yes, we want to draw the shape. You remember the shape that I've been showing you here. Draw shape is this method right here, which is simply drawing a rectangle. So that's clear. We simply want to draw that shape if we don't have a selected object then we don't have to draw that shape at all and now down here in the update function the first thing we want to do we want to be able to actually deselect the object the selected object we want to be to we want to be able to actually cancel that if we don't want to change something on that and for that we're using the right key so we check first do we have a selected object if yes we check if the right key is down if the right key is down we simply want to set this guy to null pointer so there is no object selected right now since there is no, there is no object selected this guy up here will not render anything and the next thing is to actually move the object so when the mouse when the key, uh, the mouse button left is down and when we have an object so we want to check okay inside of this move function we check if the mouse is inside of that object inside of the shape that's why we simply call move and this guy will simply make sure to check if the object is inside so that's why when i click here if i try to move this and if i do this just right here you can't move it anymore you see but if i just go here that's enough for me to actually move see 
because we want to make sure we simply we only draw we only move the object and so if we are moving the object we want to make sure we set the is moving to true because this is important for our game object to know right now we are not selecting an object we're moving it because if you don't do that you're probably going to be running through this all the time and all object will be moving at the same time so this is really crucial but if all this is not happening then you simply want to say okay it's moving object is equal to false and that's the idea so and uh, yeah this is just to store that's basically how I manage that and um, I hope you guys uh, have learned some, something from what I've been talking about I've been talking a lot <laughs> I don't even really remember what I've been talking about but hope you guys learned something uh, but still if you have a question if you have any concern if I if I talked about something which wasn't clear for you as I said I'm always open to question for those of you who know my channel you know I almost always answer uh, comments and questions so if you write something I'm there for that and uh, I'll try to manage to answer that but I also want to invite you to go out and support my work on patreon because it really means a lot it, it's really encouraging and I also want to thank all my patreon again for everything you're doing uh, for the support but if you if you watch the video till now and you haven't subscribed because you were probably skeptical and you didn't want to you know please don't leave without subscribing don't leave without liking and you could also share this video series with your friends so that they could also you know learn from this so thank you and i wish you to stay healthy and ciao